Director of Teacher Training here at Grove Academy. And um, we'll be talking tonight about the topic of nonverbal learning disabilities. Um, now, I'm curious, uh, how many of you are here as parents or family members? Okay. Most of you. How about educators? Great, great, well, it's nice. Um, this will be a kind of a general overview of uh, nonverbal learning dis disorder disabilities. And um, I have this wonderful thing. And uh, what we'll be looking at is um, an overview of nonverbal learning disabilities. We'll look at what the, what the definition is. Um, what the model of nonverbal learning disabilities are, it, uh, what the model is, and also what are the uh, what are the particular um, challenges that make up the syndrome of nonverbal learning disabilities. We will um, look at you know the the uh, strengths and challenges for students with nonverbal learning disabilities, and we'll look at you know, some of the particular areas and what strategies uh, are likely to be most useful with students who have this particular cognitive profile, um, how, how this effect can affect academics, again, some general best practices for instruction and also what the school environment ought to be um, to best serve the needs of students with Number of learning disabilities. And I should say also that the, uh, of the full handouts of the PowerPoint, PowerPoint handouts are available uh, in a PDF form on our website. So you are welcome to, um, to look for those. Uh, and Coley Bean may well send that out tomorrow as uh, to those of you who registered here also. I'm not sure what her plans are, but we'll um, <coughs> be on the website uh, soon, I hope. Uh, so, does anybody have any questions or something that you are here that you're specifically interested in on this topic before I begin, just so I know that you are, you know, that you're here to have certain things addressed? Yes? Well, I'm just curious about when it comes to, like, say, having your child in a 504, versus being able to qualify them on an IEP mm -hmm. and looking at the different um, special ed categories like SLD or ASD. And um, we're going through that process right now and we've kind of been coming mm -hmm. up against a lot of obstacles. I bet. I bet you are. Uh, yes, we will, we'll, we'll, uh, I'm, it, we'll, I'm going to look at, um, you know, the differences between nonverbal um, NLD versus some of the other, um, some of the other diagnostic categories. And uh, how that, how that the, the real specifics of the le legal, uh, what qualifies and what doesn't. I'm not an expert on that, but I can, um, but I'll tell you what I'm, what I know. That's good. Yes, that's a real challenge. Anybody else? Yes. Um, my daughter just started tenth grade in the new school, and so the program is all different now. And we're finding we had some success in middle school and now we're bumping up in high school. Now we're really getting to work with the teachers and redesign the program to make it mm -hmm. more effective since mm -hmm. the first part been challenging. So yeah. you had middle school up there, she's just on the bubble of going yeah. through that. But you know, what when you talk to the staff they don't really even always know what NLD is uh, and right. know how to really yes. help structure the program better. Sure. Or, uh, well I'm definitely gonna talk about that. Yeah. About some general um, what ages are you going to be addressing? What? What age range will you be addressing? Well, this is uh, this is the profile in general. Uh, we happen to to have a middle school student. I have a, an example of what happens to a middle school student, but really uh, that generalizes down to elementary school and and up. So we'll talk about a variety of of ages. Okay, or a range of ages, I should say. Good. Um, all right then. Well, um, 
Right now you're probably asking yourself, or maybe you are, why do we call this a nonverbal learning disability? You know, that sounds really odd. Because, especially because you think of a, of a language-based learning disability as not being very good at language, so what does it mean to be nonverbal? Well, hopefully we'll address that. Um, basically, uh, I, uh, someone with, with a nonverbal learning disability, <coughs> NLD, is going to have some impaired processing of nonverbal cues, such as uh, facial, vocal, and body cues. In other words, some difficulty visually and spatially interpreting what is going on in their environment, uh, both with human contact and also to some extent with some of the academic tasks that they're asked to do as well as some life tasks like <clears throat> finding directions and getting places easily and so on. They, uh, one of the core deficits of NLD is impaired visual spatial processing. Well, what does that mean to you? Anybody uh, have an idea of what all that entails? Visual spatial processing? Yeah? Can't ride a bike. Dizzy. That's an example. Very hard to, uh, people who have visual spatial issues sometimes have a hard time figuring out their relationship to their space around them. So. Um, you know, oftentimes somebody, uh, you know, when, when an athlete uh, does a physical, uh, does something physical, running, uh, playing sports or whatever, it's actually a pretty, uh, pretty complex activity, figuring out where you are in relation to the ball, and if you're playing tennis, you know, follow, keep your eye on the ball, and follow these things, all these things are moving. Well, if you're if your visual spatial processing is impaired, it's, it's hard to know where that ball actually is in space in relation to yourself. And it's difficult to know, uh, to remember markers for where things, where the turn is, where you have to make the turn, or how to get around a school building. Um, it's uh, so that, that that processing is slow and can result in clumsiness and, uh, y you know, and also um, somewhat different interpretations of where, you know, and, and actually missing some visual cues like stoplights, for example, or body language that tells you that someone's tired of talking to you and would kind of like to go do something else. That kind of thing. Um, there's um, also Part of that, part of that same uh, same issue is seeing part to whole relationship, but relationship. So, you know, they may they may see individual details or parts of things. They may not be able to visualize it as a whole piece. So that, in other words, if there are pieces of a puzzle they may have a very hard time figuring out how that would ever fit together into one whole. Or, um, or in general, um, they may be focused on one detail, you know, and it's kind of like a story about, uh, about people feeling different parts of the elephant, you know, the feet, the trunk, the big ears, and so on but not being able to actually figure out that it's actually a whole elephant, kind of, um, uh, if, you, uh, if that makes sense. So uh, this, this individual and ind individuals with this cognitive profile tend to think verbally, not pictorially. So um, a number of us see pictures when we read, when we um, when we hear things, when we envision how to get somewhere, uh, there's almost, you know, you almost see visual, uh, visual pictures in your head. This, this individual 
will is deficient in that not as